welcome to episode 40. That's right, Garb, a big 4-0. We finally reached that milestone in, in this show of Garb versus Time Machine. And today we're going to be talking about, I know, one of your all-time favorite classics, the 1963 film starring the legendary late great Jerry Lewis. So let's get right into it. We're, of course, talking about the original Nutty Professor. Uh, boy, that uh, when I was a kid... You know, um, a, a lot of the, the uh, special effects and you yeah. know that they did that was like the comedy stuff that they did in the Nut Nutty Professor was, uh, you know, that kind of special effects was not very good. It was yeah, uh, very amateur those days. Yeah, but but it, it didn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> because the scenes were still absolutely hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, um, the the thing too, Gar, is with that is watching these old movies. You you kind of see like even the color was kind of like different. Everything about filmmaking was kind of you know in its amateur uh, stages compared to how movies are made now. And that's what's fun yeah. about going back and watching some of these old classic movies. Absolutely, you know. And, and, but then also, uh, you know, that you know when when it's on film. Over years, yeah. uh, the quality kind of degrades, and, and oh, sure. you know, so, but they, you know, they also have uh, you know technology now where where they can take those old movies and, and return them back to the uh, clearer, oh yeah, they, uh, ver versions of them and everything. Like a few so years ago, it's kind of yeah. really nice that they can recess resuscitate those. But this is this is a movie that if you were ever going to resuscitate like yeah. that, this would have to be one of them. Yeah, you know, like, a, a few years ago, we did a um, Christmas special on It's a Wonderful Life, and I had, um, the reason we chose to do that, besides being a great classic film, is I had come across a, a DVD of it um, in Target that year, and they had, like, where you could get the color, um, they had like uh, the, the color version on this, like a two disc set color version and the, the black and white version, and, and and then they also talked about how you're saying they had this film restoration where um, they had to go back and for that very reason you're talking about to um, touch up the film, and it, it's amazing um, the difference in when they restore a film, you know? Yeah, you know, but uh, it's just there. Everybody. Uh, remembers the uh, the remake because the remake. I mean, is, yes, it's actually a long time ago too. Now I think like twenty five. Nineteen, years. I think nineteen ninety five or six or something like that. Yeah. And so so even the remake is old. And we're gonna get into that. It, it's it's overshadowed. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Lewis, Lewis's uh, you know the original version. I agree. But you know I honestly feel. And there's a lot of people when I was, you know, doing the research to, yeah. uh, you know, just to kind of, you know, uh, gloss over this stuff. And, you know, it's just, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that later. But, um, well, let's talk about this film specifically. Um, the Nutty Professor, um, the 1963 version we're talking about, was released on June 4th, 1963. The Nutty Professor um, is a science fiction comedy film starring Jerry Lewis and co-starring Stella Stevens. Now, again, the interesting thing about Jerry Lewis, he was known, of course, more as a comedian for his comedy. Um, and I say that because um, Jerry Lewis, very much like Don Knotts, if you look at the two of them, um, they, they don't, they're two guys that don't, you know, actually um, have like movie star looks, but they, they made, they're able to make it in Hollywood based on their comedy alone, you know? You know, you are a hundred percent right about that. Yeah. You know, I never really thought about that, but yes, I mean, I could not agree more. You know, uh, you know, both of them had huge amounts of success. Oh, sure. You know, at around the same time. Yeah, yeah. Which is and, funny. Uh, you know, so it's you know, it's it's really nice. You know, to yeah. to see that it's you know you can't formalize. Yeah, things. yeah. And you know, you know the I mean? interesting thing watching this film. Is it was made when um, Jerry Lewis was very young, you know, a very young man. He looked drastically different from, um, you know, what he looked like just prior to, um, you know, his death. I mean, and, and for years, you know, he became known for doing the muscular dystrophy telethon, and he looked very different. But 
that's what's fun to go back and you see how different these um, um, people look. And of course, what's interesting to come kind of find out the the film was also um, written and direct directed by Jerry Lewis, but it was actually um, based on uh, this is while well, the script was um, from a 1963 film was written by Jerry Lewis. The film was based on the 1886 novel Strange Case of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, written by Robert. Lewis Stevenson. So again, based on a novel from, if you can believe it, 1886. Um, and what's interesting to find out that you watch The Nutty Professor and you can see how they could make a comparison to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But of course, like, um, you know, it, it would go on to become a successful, like one of those successful universal horror films. And you look at The Nutty Professor and you look at, um, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, um, the classic horror movie. It almost has nothing to do with each other. They look like two totally different stories, you know. Yes, yes, yes. The um, y you would really not think that they're related yeah. or anything like that. It's it's more like Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde was an influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but but absolutely. But you know, you just have to admit that you know, just uh, Jerry Lewis, uh, you know. Uh, it's it's the ultimate in his creativity because he had a lot to do with uh, writing the script and it took a long time. I think it was like five six years. Yeah, yeah. He spent uh, on you know uh, on the script, uh, collaborating with different people, you know, bouncing ideas and stuff like that off of different people, and so so it just really gives you an idea about uh, how much of an investment of of his time that he put into developing the nutty professor before it ever was uh, filmed yeah. got accepted by a, a studio to actually uh make the movie yeah and what's very interesting about that gar is that um again um i think you can compare it to something like um we did a past episode on young frankenstein and it, it's similar in that um Young Frankenstein, Mel Brooks took what was a classic, you know, the classic 1931 uh, Frankenstein horror film by Universal, you know, um, based on an 18-something novel, too, and um, rather than kind of make a continuation or a repeat of what, you know, the classic horror film, he, um, you know, talking about Mel Brooks, he, um, he infused comedy into what was a classic horror film, and I think in both cases, um, The Nutty Professor and Young Frankenstein... That's why these films were so successful, because they had the comedy element. It was something a little different than what might, maybe what people were initially expecting when they first started hearing about The Nutty Professor, you know? Well, I think you really touched on something there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, uh, it, just, it just seems, you're, you know, really, you're right about that. Yeah. You know? And in fact, that's why all these years later, you look at some like Young Frankenstein or a Nutty Professor. I mean, um, I think I include myself and anybody. A lot of people when they go to the movies, they they like to forget about their problems. They like to see a good comedy. They buy, they want to see a film that's going to make them laugh. Um, and again, something like the Nutty Professor, um, based off of something like Doctor Strange. You know, I, excuse me, um, Doctor Jekyll and Hyde, Mister Hyde. Um, you're not really expecting a comedy film, but you go see this, of course, because it's got Jerry Lewis. It has to have that comedy element. And, and that's a way he really made this film his own, you know? Well, you know, back in those days, they didn't do remakes. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, and, and I think um, studios should, should think about uh, the approach to remakes because I think when you take uh, the creative way that Mel Brooks uh, did with Young Frankenstein yeah. and, and Jerry Lewis did with The Nutty Professor and, and other people too, uh, you know, from the same time period, what they do is they take it and then they they use their creative genius to, to, to use it as an influence rather than just making a remake a la, say, like The Omen. There's the yeah. original Omen from the 70s and then there's the remake of the omen and and you look at the remake of the omen and and, and it's the exact same storyline it's the exact same movie just different just actors with different actors yeah which is you why know, so so that whole approach 
approach to doing yeah. remake, and and usually remakes don't really do as well as they originally did, which is why they're doing a remake. Which you know is, what I mean? Yeah. Which but is the creative yeah. way that Jerry Lewis and Mel Brooks, you know, approach to that. You know, when you're adding this element of, you know, of course it has to be an element of genius yeah. creativity, but you can actually really come up with something like that and then now you have something that has the potential to become hugely successful. Yeah, which is why I totally agree with what you were saying about um, the later um, the later editions of The Nutty Professor starring Eddie Murphy. I mean, uh, I'm a little younger than you, Gar, so I can tell this was my kind of um, story to that. I mean, I remember seeing those Eddie Murphy films when they first came out, um, not having any idea about the Jerry Lewis film at the time. And... Um, I, I remember taking my grandmother's show and, oh, you know, this is a remake, you know, Jerry Lewis, he made the original version of this film. And so, uh, and then I, I eventually saw that film and, and I totally agree with you. Even though they're, it's based on the uh, a Jerry Lewis film, it is very different for, for a lot of reasons. I mean, first of all, let's talk about, um, and it's, to, to me, it's not even so important that um, Jerry Lewis is a, is a white actor and Eddie Murphy is... Um, a black actor, and, and I think, I'll tell you why, because, number one, 30, it's like 30-something years between um, the Jerry Lewis movie and the Eddie Murphy version of the film, and so there's a certain number of people like myself that weren't even born back then when the original film came out, so a lot of people aren't going to even know about the original film. Then there's a certain number of people from, a night, you know, from that era that are not, not even here anymore, so a lot of people never even uh, heard of the original classic film. So by the time the 1990s roll around, Eddie Murphy's still a big star. And then the other thing you notice is in the Eddie Murphy film, it's more based about, again, the comedy factor may make it a little different because it's more based on him becoming, you know, uh, he's, he's overweight and he wants to lose all this weight and become like a good-looking skinny guy. And, and that's kind of the comedy element in the Eddie Murphy version. Whereas in this version, the 1963 film we're talking about, it's more about... He's he's kind of a nerd. He's not he's not too cool and hip with the girls. And all of a sudden, he becomes a sly, slick kind of a greasy hipster. But it's all of a sudden, um, you know, he's he's not his usual nerdy self. Uh, yeah, you, you're right. I, I just gotta let you know that right now, I don't know what, what's going on on your end, but you're you're kind of going between clear and muffled okay so i just i just figured I'd, I'd let you know you know it's it's kind of going in and out interesting clear, i can clear I, and muffled. I can hear you fine can you hear me now well I, it's not like I, I can't hear you yeah. it's just going between you know, it's going through periods where it sounds muffled oh that's interesting okay well I, i'm okay. i'm fine on this end but so um okay. what do you think of, about that about the Eddie Murphy film. Okay. I say, what do you think? How would you compare the Eddie Murphy um, version of the film to the uh, Jerry Lewis? Well, you know, I, I, you know, this is, you know, honestly, it, it's not an open mind yeah. uh, of me to take this kind of a stance. And, and I have to call myself on that. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can be called out on things. And to be honest with you, I was, I, I have never, uh, I don't, I just don't recall seen it. Uh, instances where yeah. I've seen a remake that I was, I, I liked it. I've had so many disappointing experiences. I got you. Okay, okay. With watching remakes that it's affected me to the point where I won't even give a remake a chance anymore. Okay. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of it's kind of weird, and it's really not fair of me. Okay. You know what I mean? Because because really, in in reality. You know, it should based be a thing like that should be based yeah. on each uh, individual basis, not as a broad sweeping. I'm never watching remakes again, but that's what I did. Okay, let and me just. I never really watched, you know, the Ed, yeah. Eddie Murphy version, but it's it's not like I had some kind of aversion to it. Mm -hmm. It's just because I've had so many disappointing experiences watching uh, remakes. But in doing the research, uh, you know, uh, yeah. I, I did come across 
you know, there was, you know, a, a lot of people didn't know that uh, Jerry Lewis was uh, a, a, the executive producer of the remake. Okay. And he actually, uh, you know, uh, gave blessing uh, for them to, uh, you know, yeah. move forward with doing it, you know, because they had to ask him for sure, sure. Uh, permission. You know, he, he's really, uh, you know, smart. He, he retained his rights to all his movies and everything like Very that. Very smart. He, you yeah. know, gave him that Power. Uh, position to be able to make that call. You know what I mean? But, you know, he, he did play a big part in making the movie and, and uh, but, you know, then after all was said and done, you know, at the end of the day, he was, uh, you know, somebody interviewed him, you know, later after he, it was already out and yeah. had achieved the success that it did. He had a time to kind of reflect and he felt that, you know, uh, you know, the original, because, you know, because the original was so groundbreaking, oh, sure. and, you know, that, that, you know, it, it, you know, doing the remake, he kind of had regrets because he felt the remake. He didn't know it at the time. Yeah, it didn't really cross his mind. But but seeing it after the fact, he realized that it, it kind of diminished the uh, you know the uh, accomplishments of the original. Yeah, I mean, I agree with yeah, sounds. I agree with you, Gar. But it's um, you know the Eddie Murphy version is almost a completely different movie for the simple fact that. Um, you know, in the Jerry Lewis version, it's more based on him being more kind of a nerd and accident prone and not too hip with the girls. Um, you know, ver uh, cool versus not being cool. Whereas the Eddie Murphy version is more based on the fact that Eddie Murphy's character is overweight and he wants to lose all this weight. Um, so it, it kind of just the plot alone is very different. Well, yeah, and 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 uh, it's it's. It, Jerry Lewis, that element right there is a stark difference between the two. Because think about this: the, the you know the the thinking of uh, young uh, young boys and young men yeah. that are of that age, uh, where they're socially interacting with girls, and it's a it's a new and exciting thing, and everybody remembers that time in their lives, you know, where when you had a thing for some girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. you had that tingly feeling, you know, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And, and now, you know, see, Jerry Lewis's element had that element that appealed uh, to, uh, because, because very few people, uh, very few men in society have that kind of success with, with girls. Oh, yeah, and see, it's, it's a very small uh, percentage, percentage yeah. of the male population that has has that kind of success with girls. Now, you make a movie that touches on that mm. in a comedic way. You know, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It, it just, it, it's, it's kind of one of those appeal boosters that was a, a part of the, mo the movie's success that was never pre-planned and never realized that it was going to even have that effect yeah. until after the movie was actually made and people saw that it had that effect but you see what i mean yeah. when you take that part of the storyline and and take it away from the the, the girl boy uh, first love yeah. you know time period of their life which is a hugely you know it really stirs up really warm and happy and really good memories versus another storyline that's about somebody that, that wants just wants to be able to Lose uh, achieve more uh, better feelings about themselves yeah. through losing weight. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 that is a real thing too. Oh, sure. But it doesn't. That element in 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 the movie doesn't have the same appeal. I I totally agree. I haven't seen um, both both versions of the film. I mean. Um, Part of what works, like you just kind of uh, stated, with the Jerry Lewis version, is okay. As I described at the top of episode, this is a science fiction comedy. I mean, yes. um, and and that yes. went. I mean, there's not too many of those, and so um, there is that element, as you described, Gar, where um, I mean, a lot of us when we were that age, um, getting interested in girls, were awkward around them. We how how much do you wish when you were that age that you could have had a magic love potion you could have um 
you know, just take it and made made you hip with all the girls. I mean, we all, you, you know, I mean, in reality, we know that it, it's kind of made up. It's fantasy. It's something that could never happen. But just the thought that, hey, what if, you know, that's what made this film so fun because people can go see a film like this and, you know, I know this could never really happen, but just, just what if? Oh, my God. You know, uh, you know, there's not enough of uh, a prescription to fulfill <laughs> yeah, how many yeah, people yeah. Would, would clamor to have it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because, because you, know, uh, you know, because it's such a small portion of the male population that has that kind of success with women... All other men idolize those guys. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They all, you know, oh my God, they all want to aspire to be that guy. And I even remember myself, you know, at that time wanting to aspire to be that guy. Yeah, yeah. Even though Jerry, Jerry Lewis pointed out that that character... Was really not a, guy, a good guy. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't a nice guy. He was actually a dick. Yeah, yeah. That was the whole point. <laughs> but but it also proved another point that uh, that men scratch their heads because men are always raised to open doors for women to be you know to be that that uh, the you pro- know, that, proper uh, proper etiquette. Great, you know what I mean? Proper etiquette. You know, yeah. Men are always way, raised to do to be that way and then when you see a guy that's a dick like yeah yeah, that, yeah, yeah. the women are clamoring and they're super attracted to that men scratch their heads because they just don't understand because they were raised to not treat women like that yeah. but women truly do attract to that yeah yeah and and women were really blowing jerry lewis's mind because after the movie came out women were writing letters to him voicing how much they were attracted to his buddy love character wow, yeah, he, yeah. he was having really difficulty not wanting to write back to these women going yeah 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 yeah, yeah. The jerk yeah, yeah. You're attracted to him. What is wrong, wrong with, with you? you? Yeah, and now, you know um, I mean? but yeah. that's a real thing that happened from that movie. How many movies come out can say they have that kind of d- dynamic with their audience? Yeah, yeah, not too many. And you know, Gar, um, you, you know, you make a couple good points because, um, you know, I, I've heard some like uh, jerk buddy love types in my life go up to these women and just say some real crude things that you think, man. I would never get away with saying something like that, or I never even, I never even have the guts to say that, you know. I would never even think to say and, and something then, like that. Yeah, there, there have been one or two times in my life where I try to say something and maybe got away with it, but you know what I mean. So, um, you know, we are raised to have this proper um, etiquette, and you know, we, we've um, we've already been twenty minutes into today's episode, and we haven't even really talked about um, the the character. I mean, Jerry Lewis played the part of nerdy, accent-prone, socially awkward. Mad scientist, college professor, Julius Kelp in the classroom. Kelp's experiments are unsuccessful and oftentimes quite destructive. So again, this nerdy kind of accent-prone guy, Julius Kelp, this is the main character he plays in the film. Um, and, and science is kind of his main, his main interest in life. He tries to, he's one of these guys that you could tell throughout the film. He kind of, um, science is his interest. Maybe it's kind of, gives him something to hide behind but you know he's cost there's uh, the one guy who works at the school head of his school he kind of is like all these experiments you're doing they always are unsuccessful and accident prone and things are always happening so you know it's kind of his um at that point before he be, turns into buddy love it's kind of um his way of kind of um telling people okay i'm a, I'm a mad scientist this is what i do i do experiments yeah, and, and he's having this difficult, this social difficulty, you know, about this whole uh, interacting with women. He wants this girl yeah. and everything. He's super attracted to her and everything, but he knows he's... He, Doesn't have a the chance. The yeah. dynamic is right now, he's never even going to have a shot. He's not even going to have an inkling of a shot. Yeah, yeah. And so what is, what is his thinking? It's a normal reaction. You use what you do best yeah. to try to address uh, 
problems because you know what I mean it's your it's the thing that you know how to do best and you all I, I you know I I've I've subjected myself to that that formula many many times you know sometimes with success and sometimes not but that is a viable formula yeah you know after watching the film the only thing I thought would have made the film a little bit funnier was if could you imagine if um, halfway let's say through the film these women that are all of a sudden attracted to this guy they find out that he just imagine they found out yeah he created this love potion and this is the real reason you guys are all of a sudden attracted to him and could you imagine the outroar and um i'd seen an old uh, episode of a 90s sick, uh, tv sitcom um saved by the bell where the main character zach morris in this episode he learns this thing from somebody about um using like um hidden messages when you record stuff to um get people to do like mind-altering things and He's, he's uh, he records this stuff to get all these girls to all of a sudden become attracted to him. And then, of course, when they later learn, oh, he's using mind-altering messages to get us to all these girls' attention, you could have... Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I, I can't help but wonder, like, if just an episode of a TV sitcom like that was based on this, you know? Well, I guess you can't think of everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know, it, it, I truly, truly believe, you know, uh, this movie, and, and not to take away from his other movies, yeah. but I personally believe, uh, you know, of my opinion, that, that The Nutty Professor is his best uh, w work he had ever accomplished. You're, you're not alone there, Gar, because um, that I, I was reading that sentiment um, online when I was doing the research from... It says many, many people describe Jerry Lewis's Nutty Professor as um, the most memorable, best film of his entire career. And, and that's really saying something. Yeah, and, and I, I think another element that, that was part of the movie's success was how drastic the juxtaposition between the two characters. Yeah. You know, the, the nerdy character versus the buddy love. The buddy love was such a stark, drastic difference. Yeah, and then the there was... The um, character. And, and uh, you saw a side of Jerry Lewis that I think I, I think that's another part that really affected uh, the you know the, the the audiences out there is they never knew that that side of Jerry Lewis existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, um, and, and you know, discovering it to the movie, it, it, I'm sure that had a real wow factor because up until that point, the only thing you had ever seen of any character was the wacky, crazy, you know, slapstick comedy Jerry Lewis. Yeah, yeah, and you know, um, another uh, one of the scenes that kind of really stood out, and it's kind of, um, it's not major, but it's at the beginning of the film where he is outside the school driving around like this little jeep. And he, and he fills it up with all his, you know, crazy mad science um, books. But the books are, like, piled all over it throughout the Jeep. just And you can really see nothing but the books. And and he, he drives away. And it just kind of gives you, an, um, before the movie gets too far into any, anything, uh, okay, you know right away this guy's a little off his rock. He's not all, he's not that normal. Yeah. 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 And then there's a one part where he starts doing the experiment, coming up with the love potion or whatever you want to call it. And, um... He even thinks ahead, like you know, like I think most scientists would. Okay, you know what? What is science? As they say, okay, it's um, it's like testing theories of different things. So, um, you run an experiment and you kind of are trying to figure out whatever the problem or whatever your science you're trying to uh, determine. And and in this case, he thinks that okay, well, just in case anything goes wrong and this experiment goes horribly wrong, in, in the event something happens to me, I'm going to send the formula, you know, in the mail to my mother and father. So. They can give us to you know somebody else in, in the event something goes horribly wrong. Yeah, and then the way that turned out was funny too. Yeah, and he, and he goes to throw first. He's going to go uh, put it in the mailbox. Actually, puts it in the trash. Has to reach in there, and put it in the mailbox again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I loved so much of that movie, but you know, it, it just the movie came out yeah. at the perfect time period because I was of that age, you know. Yeah. The, the coming of age, uh, you know, and, and then watching that movie, you know, with, with you know, this guy that turns into the nerd, nerd and, cool uh, you know, or he starts out and then he takes a love potion and he 
turns into this guy that all women are attracted to, and they just swoon over her and sigh yeah, and it, faint. It, it, it almost you know, yeah. Every boy wants to be that guy, and everybody's yeah. just looking at that. And I, I, I have to admit, as a young boy, I was watching that movie, and it really had a major wow factor for me. Oh yeah, it almost reminds me if you know if you remember the um, '90s sitcom. Um, uh, family matters when you know they start i think kind of um running out of ideas they start doing this thing where the main character steve urkel um who is also another kind of nerdy nerdy school geeky type uh kid um all, he, all of a sudden he's a scientist too and he 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 creates does this science experiment and he creates this machine that transforms him takes all the nerdiness out of him and he's transformed into stefan and all of a sudden he's <laughs> hip with all the girls and it, he is cool and 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 he does he wants nothing to do with the old Steve Urkel and um, but, but every so often he gets he gets into these predicaments where he he where Steve Urkel is like more normal and he's like I need to go back to being Steve because Stefan's just too cool. <laughs> it's, it's working against me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which <laughs> is ultimately what Buddy Love does here because um, as you're saying, um, okay, when Professor Julius Kelp is attacked. And embarrassed by a bullying football player, Professor Kelp seeks a solution to his social awkwardness and lack of self-confidence and turns to his specialty, uh, which is chemistry. And he invents a love potion that all of a sudden turns the once awkward professor, rather transforms him into Buddy Love, who is now a handsome, suave, charming, girl-chasing hipster. And I, would, I, I, I think you give it a better prescription. Um, while this is somebody that a lot of us would uh, aspire to be, uh, by the end of the film, you know, um, the, the professor kind of has the same conclusion. I, I think you gave it a perfect description. He's, Buddy Love is really a dick. And, um, and the professor, by the end of the film, has kind of come to the, that realization because he even gets up and he apologizes for a lot of the crazy things he's done and said as Buddy Love. And he's like, you know, I realize, which I think is kind of the point of the film. I realized that, um, you know, it um, you got to be you got to be happy with who who you are because if you're trying to be somebody, honestly, that you know, it, it just there's some people that have major major difficulty yeah. coming to grips with that and really yeah. getting their minds wrapped around that. That you know, the bottom line is is um, everybody can have. Uh, some sub semblance mm. of that kind of success uh, with women just by being, being themselves. yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you know, and just there's some guys that just never get it. They 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 lack so much confidence in their themselves that they just can't do it. They can't be themselves, and 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 they just don't realize that you know that you know people people can see through that that yeah. you're not being yourself and. It's a real turnoff. It, now you doubly may turn things against you. Yeah, I mean, I give you. Know, you yeah. That's the truth. You know, and and and, and that I think that really uh, is the moral of the story. Is is really you know everyone should should really aspire to just being themselves. Yeah, you know, I mean, I give you a perfect example. Like even when I was growing up, um, I got a younger brother. I'm I'm the oldest one, and. And for whatever reason, he was um, as a as a youngster, he was more um, socially comfortable. He'd go up to people, and he, he could meet somebody on the street, and you know, by the end of the day, they'd be his new best friend. Um, I was a little more shy and awkward. I, I don't particularly know why, but um, you know, the older I got, eventually, I um, I came out of that, and eventually, um, you know, I, I got to the point in life where um, what I discovered is I'm not saying I'm not sitting here and saying I'm the funniest guy and I'm Jerry Seinfeld or anything like that, but um, I learned to open up and like um, tell little funny, stupid jokes, um, and kind of people, um, people even at work come up to me. Oh, you know, you're, you're, uh, uh, you made me laugh or something you said. Oh well, you know, okay, I'm glad I can provide that service. But you know, people I think throughout life, you know, they, they who are socially awkward uh, initially, you find something that kind of um, can help you out of that. You know, yeah, like like yeah. a guy like you. <laughs> service to this comedy yeah. too i mean i mean even a guy like you gar i imagine um it takes a certain kind of um 
ego to to be in a band, get up on stage and do what you, you did. And and um, and you know, I, I think um, what what I'm saying is, I, I I I'm from knowing you as long as I have, you know, doing these uh, interviews and shows. Um, the one thing I've kind of gathered about you is, I would imagine that no doubt music has been a big part of your life, and music is. Um, come through for you and probably a lot of um, difficult times of your life. I, I don't know if you want to comment on that or if, if I might. Well, you know, uh, music for me has been like science has been for the uh, nutty professor. professor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you know, I, and, and everyone, you know, has something that they know how to do that they've done for a long time and they it, it's it's just it's just part of their DNA. You know, and that's the wonderful thing about society is is uh, there is no one formula at, for at success what yeah. brings uh, joy and happiness to each individual. It, it, it's it's always a uh, a different with each individual, you know, kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, so, so, you know, how is it that people are going to attempt to, uh, you know, achieve that happiness? Yeah. They're going to use what they do best. What, and, your strength, your strength. Just yeah. like the nutty professor, you know, he used what he knew how to do best Science. to yeah. try to address the problem, and he came up with a quite a novel <laughs> way to address it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, but, uh, it, I mean, you know, it's just, you know, there, I, you know, just the idea of taking a pill and having that kind of a transformation happen is like so appealing. Just like that movie Limitless. Yeah. Where I you mean, take a pill yeah. and now you become a genius. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say, like, um, I, 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 I dare say that because of a nutty professor, we have all these other things to be thankful for, like. Um, something as simple, I, I can't even remember who did the song, but like Love Potion Number 9, there's a song called that. Um, probably is based on uh, off of, you know, The Nutty Professor. You, you have all these romantic yes. movies where, okay, we're, we're going to create a love potion. I mean, and again, um, this all comes after The Nutty Professor. So again, talking about influence here, you know. Well, you know, and, and, and that, you know, love potion is an element to storyline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And 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 now you combine that with uh, the social interactions between men and women. You mm. see where that? It's just a win-win storyline. Oh sure. And now, um, you know, I mean, now that we've been talking about this, you know, through this episode, and I'm just so glad we did. We're coming to new revelations about. You know, uh, you know the movie and and how it came about and why Jerry Lewis spent so much of his time, so many years, yeah. developing that story. Oh, sure. uh, to make it that is such a a, 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 a gem. Sure. You know what I mean? Such a, a diamond of a movie. Yeah, it's it's one of those um, times where it, it's not necessarily about. Um you know, making it right away, but it's more about the quality. So you take your time, you develop yes. it. Yes, and, and that's, the, you know, you, you're right about that because that's another thing that's kind of getting lost. Studios will not give that time to people. If you have, if you are going to do that, you're going to have to do it on your own dime and on your own time. Yeah. And, and studios would, uh, back in those days, yes, you know, Jerry Lewis did spend that much time uh, developing the movie, but he did it with with uh, studio backing. Yeah, I, 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 and I mean, I don't know this. I'm just wondering. I'm wondering back then if they even paid people like for writing the script, like, or did he just get paid for you know acting in the movie? I, I don't know. But um, no, they, they got they got paid for writing scripts, and and, and script writers are the unsung hero, oh, sure. heroes of all TV shows and all movies. They are so unrecognized as you take away that one element and it is the difference between anything being successful and good and and just being a flop see, see that, that's that much yeah. of a difference maker that the writers make on anything they work on yeah and 90 that's 90 percent yeah. of the time when something's successful it's because of the right yeah and you have stressed that so many times throughout our um, various episodes we've done and you know Gar um, you, you make a very good point here because I think that is one of the reasons why Jerry Lewis is a uh, 
comedy legend. I mean, um, he, he, you know, he, it'd be one thing to um, star in movies where other people write the script, but, but at least in The Nutty Professor, in this case, okay, he wrote the script, so he's playing the main character. He's writing his own jokes. I think he could be just as funny, um, you know, um, if somebody else wrote the jokes and he's playing the part, but uh, it, I think it's it's um, very much like if you're a musician and you write a song, um, yes. you, you could write, you, you could, you could perform a song, attachment, yeah, right? you, you could perform a song, you know, really written and recorded by somebody else. But if you are doing an original song that you wrote, you, as you're performing, as you're singing it, you can sing it uh, more from the heart, if you know what I mean, as opposed to very much like uh, we talked before about the Tonight Show, Johnny Carson, another great comedian, but, um, he had his jokes on the Tonight Show written for most of them, and like you talked about, at one point in the '80s, they had a um, writer strike, and so he didn't have any monologue or any jokes uh, during that downtime. Um, he just, you know, did the show or whatever, um, and the and, uh, the jokes weren't as funny, you know. That's my point. Yeah. You, talk shows were my gauge for the same thing yeah. because they had another strike uh, many years later, uh, you know, and the same thing happened when, uh, you know, Conan O'Brien was on Channel 4 yeah, late night. Yeah. And I, I used to love watching it. I'd stay up late to watch it because I loved his, his, his program. Yeah. You know, they, I like this. I, I, thought, I liked the whole show. It was, he was really funny yeah. and he was at the top of his game at that time but then that strike hit and then he had to write his own joke <laughs> yeah, yeah, he yeah. was actually a successful joke writer for Saturday Night Live for many years uh, cutting his teeth in the business yeah yeah so so it's it's not a foreign thing to him being a joke writer yeah yeah and I was watching it and there was a drastic dip in the quality of his jokes yeah yeah. And his monologue, you know what I mean? It, it was a drastic difference, and I was going, "Oh my god!" Yeah, yeah. You really cannot deny the effect that the writers have had on his show. Yeah, they better get this resolved soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That that was what was going through my head. They better get this resolved soon because this is bad. And this show is going to be pulled, you know, uh, or canceled. Uh, and again, talk a little bit more about the character of Buddy Love. As Buddy Love, the professor no longer lacks the self-confidence he's so long for, for, for his entire life. So, so again, um, as you're saying, you know, we, we all have, there's a part of the element of this film where you watch the film, as, uh, we all are guilty of this, like, what if, what if I could create a potion and take it and, and become as cool as Buddy Love? You know, what, what if? Um, and, and again, you watch this film and, and at first it seems like, Buddy cool, he's cool, and all of a sudden his problem, he, no, he has no longer any problems, everything is cool, but again, it's just kind of a start, start of a problem, and then by the end of the, by the, end of the film, we kind of see, oh yeah, he d does turn into this dick, and um, you know, and he, and he, even he has a self-realization that, hey, um, I, I should just be who I am and not, not try to, you know, hide behind this facade and be somebody who I'm really not. And to be honest with you, to me, that's a great storyline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, ending it with that revelation, it's, to me, you know, if you're ever going to send a message to young men, that's a great message to send to young men. And that's the truth, you know, be, you know, that, you know, it's, uh, you know, aspiring to be somebody that you're really not naturally mm -hmm. like. Yeah. You know, we all, you know, it, 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 most men out there do aspire to that. But the truth of the fact is, is if they were meant to be like that, they would already be like that. Yeah. And, and see, the other thing throughout the film um, is that um, even though he knows Buddy Love isn't a good person. Um, he's kind of um, he's kind of got the problem that I know Buddy Love is really a bad person, but on the other side, I love the attention I'm all of a sudden getting that I never got before. I I I love having I love all of a sudden being a self confident person and not lacking self confidence. But but again, by the film, he kind of realizes okay, in spite of that, I got to be true to who I am. Yeah, yeah, and then and then. 
you know, we spent all this time talking about Jerry Lewis and everything because he's, I mean, he's just the, such yeah. a major force in the movie. But you can't forget about Stella Stevens. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. At that time period, she was so beautiful. And back in those days, the thing about it is that to this day, you know, you I, I, you just have to hugely embrace is the fact that those women back in those days were naturally that beautiful sure sure they were not altered yeah you know to to be that beautiful they're 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 not they didn't surgically make it and mm -hmm. and so you know it, it, that you know that's just that element of that time period that you know she was that beautiful back in those days uh at a time when it, it was it was if you didn't naturally have it it was never gonna happen yeah yeah and another thing we should bring up is i was reading that um as you know um early on in jerry um lewis's career he was partnered up um his his comedy partner was dean martin a legendary uh, singer and actor and, and for um, a long long time they were hugely successful as a duo and they had i mean you know yeah. when i was young i was you know i was introduced to them as a duo before i was ever yeah. you know uh, really aware of the solo jerry lewis yeah 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 and everything and and so you know for me i saw that transformation where they wound up pairing off or, or splitting off yeah. And, uh, you know, there, it, it, that was a, um, it was not a, a good split. Yeah. Uh, you know, it wound up that they didn't speak for like 20 years. And then uh, one day, uh, you know, when Jerry was doing his telethon, uh, one of his guests that was going to be on his muscular district yeah, yeah, yeah. telethons was uh, Frank Sinatra. And so Frank Sinatra uh, surprised Jerry, uh, telling Jerry that he brought a friend of his oh, wow. uh, with him. <laughs> and he brought Dean Martin, and they hadn't seen each other for 20 years until that moment. And in that moment, uh, what you know, what they said when I was reading the the research is they were saying you could watch as they were interacting with each other on right at that moment. Wow! The animosity was melting away. Wow! You could watch <laughs> it and just see it melting wow. away, which made it even more profound yeah. of a you know of a moment that was actually captured on uh, you know on TV wow you, you see what I mean you gotta it's love a really special moment that it, I'm sure you can go on YouTube yeah, yeah. and you can even find it yeah you know but it's it's a goosebumps moment I mean you talk know, about happened, must see you know, TV and, and a lot of people don't even know about that I mean talk about must see TV God bless Frank Sinatra for that I mean um, that's one of those things that um, I, I'm just assuming, based on the way you've described it, um, once these guys just seen each other, probably just started breaking down in tears and realizing, wow, how the hell did we let so much time go um, between not, you know between us not talking? And, and the reason I brought that up was Gar because um, apparently when this movie came out, a lot of people thought that the character of Buddy Love was based on um, Jerry Lewis's kind of sarcastic. Um, take let's say of, of dean martin at the time what, what he thought of him at the time and um lewis always kind of um denied that so so um i, I don't know if there's any truth to those rumors but that's what a lot of people thought for years no you know you know sometimes you know those kind of things happen yeah. and and uh you know but you know but their history together as a you know it, it, you know when i was like actually looking at that at that part of this whole thing you know yeah. the side story of it of the dean martin uh jerry lewis thing you know is was that uh you know it it was uh they were they were hugely sex successful yeah. but you know when they actually paired off both of them wound up having even you know more success, success yeah than they had when they had the pair 
pairing of them. And and when they actually split off, both of them really had, uh, you know, uh, you know, moments of being scared about now they're going to have to, yeah. you know, not be able to lean on each other yeah. for the for the popularity and the success of their careers. They were going to have to sustain it on their own. And it was and if and if you know the, you know it's the unknown, and you really don't when it's in that kind of situation, you just don't know if if uh, what you have talent wise as a soloist is enough to sustain it. Yeah, yeah, and um, just in case you were wondering, Gar, a little trivia for you on the Nutty Professor, which uh, was filmed on the campus of Arizona State University in, Temp in Tempe, Arizona, from October 9th to December seventeenth, nineteen sixty-two. So. Um, that's where most of it was filmed, and um, it also said a little, a little interesting trivia. Throughout the film, you may have noticed, Gar, um, that you see RC Cola um, was on display throughout the film in the form of RC Cola plastic bottles, vending machines, and a delivery truck. And that's because at the time Jerry Lewis was um, then under contract as a celebrity spokesperson for RC uh, Soda Company. Well, you know, a lot of people now don't even know that that company <laughs> even, ever existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I was a child, RC Cola was just as popular as Coca-Cola. Yeah, I dare say more popular only because I remember even um, as a child watching All in the Family and um, and, and and Archie's dummy son-in-law, uh, Mike Stivick, that was his favorite soda. He was always talking about RC soda, RC, Royal yeah, Crown Cola. You know, it's an, just another uh, slice of history that's faded, mm -hmm. you know, over the years. That, you know, but yeah, at that time, uh, RC Cola was very, very popular. There's, I remember having RC Cola in our refrigerator when I was a kid and we were growing up. In fact, it used, I still see it from time to time in the store, so it is still available, but it's not as popular as Coke and it's, Pepsi. It's a nostalgia thing yeah. now for people like you and me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then here, here's the last thing that's kind of really interesting. Um, in the year 2000, the American Film Institute placed uh, this film, A Nutty Professor, get this, at number 99 on their list of 100 years of 100 laughs. So again, just barely making the list, but it was good enough to make the list. So I think that says something right there. Well, you know, yeah, in looking at it in context, yeah. you know, over these years, you know, how old things like that fade in yeah, popularity yeah. because, you know, it's kind of out, out of sight, out yeah. of mind, you know, kind of thing. And and when you have something that is, goes that far back, is that old, Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean, but still makes a major list. You know, you, it, it speaks to the accomplishment of the movie that it's had that kind of staying power. Oh, sure, sure. There's a lot of things that are going to be on that list that are going to be much higher on that list. For obvious that reason, yeah. you take the same amount of time in the future and they're not even going to be on the list. Yeah, yeah, and there, and there are some... But, there are some but films. The point is, yeah. is that if you go that far in the future again, there's a really good possibility that the Nutty Professor will still be on that list. Yeah, and here's the thing: um, when you got a list of a hundred films, you know, from the last hundred years, I mean, to even make a list of a hundred films uh, of that, that says, you know, it, it belongs there, and 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 then that's the thing: how many films just did they not have room for? You know. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. So, and, and then um, to kind of close out today's show, I, I thought it'd be interesting to kind of look at um, what were some popular TV shows in 1963. And, and those at the time, um, you tell me if you're a fan of any of these or not, Gar. Um, my, my Favorite Martian, Beverly Hillbillies, Dick Van Dyke Show, Ed Sullivan Show, um, Candid Camera, and Andy Griffith Show. Now, I, I will tell you, Gar, um, after coming up, seeing this list today that I came up with, um, um, one one I definitely think we got to do a show on in the future, and you tell me what you think is Candid Camera. You know, I, I, I do worry about it, it being so old. And yeah, yeah. There's just an element. Of, okay, of, we'll uh, think about it. Our, no, 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 don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. I'm not finished. But there is an element of our, uh, you know, uh, fan base that, that likes to listen to this that uh, it might be older than, you know, the, the, you know what I mean? Yeah. It might be off their radar. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, you know, the, the show really set the groundwork 
for uh, other stuff that you know, have followed, if it wasn't for candid camera, you wouldn't have America's funniest. Video. That's what that's what I was getting ready to say, and. Yeah. Um, we don't want to delve too much into that because yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. this is a different episode. But yeah. you know, uh, you know, it, it's just I, I got to thank you for bringing up the Nutty Professor because this movie was such a special, uh, you know, moment in life, my life for what I was basically saying because of the age and the yeah, 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 and everybody wanting to aspire and everything. So it's it's just a, you know that movie was really special to me. Oh sure, and, sure. And and just to go over it and again, it, this episode, yeah, I have to admit, yeah. you know, I did a show last night, and you know, we we did stay up kind of late and everything yeah. like that, and 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 so when I, you know, when when we started doing this episode, I was a little bit foggy, yeah. You know what I mean? A, a little bit, uh, you know. Recovery. You're full of energy. You know, I can hear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and so I I pulled off the freeway because I'm I'm actually driving home from the show, uh, you know, and. And, and I, I guess where I pulled up to. Where? Right now, you know, I'm, I'm just off the 15 freeway and I got off at Glen Helen. And I'm in the parking lot of the, the park over here at Glen Helen. And behind me is the uh, Glen Helen Amphitheater, you know, where they uh, had the Us Festival. Oh, wow. And, wow. And uh, they used to do the Renaissance Fair mm -hmm. here at the park. And and so I decided, you know, because this place is such a, you know, special memories because, of, mm -hmm. you know, the, I went to the Us Festival, oh, wow. you know, on, on the heavy metal day and everything like great memories of that and and i used to love to go to the renaissance fair when it was over here at this park wow. and, and anybody that, that checks out this show if you get a chance to go to the renaissance fair and you have never been you need to go wow wow you know i just i i love it you're basically step when once you step in that gate you just stepped in a time machine well gar garbors you are no longer in 2023 well garbors i i I had no idea. Uh, talk about dedication. I mean, um, I didn't even know. I, I had no idea that you you had a show just last night until you told me um, before going on there today. That is dedication. And and <laughs> and, and I gotta say, this is, especially this episode. Think and, about it, Jason. Yeah, and I gotta say, if you if you're at all tired, you do not sound like. And I think maybe it's your love for this film. Um, oh man, this this episode. I started out rough, but man, once it got going, boy, did I start going. And talk about your dedication to, to doing the show, uh, having that kind of um, dedication pull over a side of road because you, you so much want to do the show. That is why Gar, you are the rock star of everybody's <laughs> favorite um, pop culture playground. And before we wrap this up and say goodbye, I just want to let people know we are totally excited about what's coming up for um, episode forty-one, and that is. Something we've talked about doing for a while now. It is going to be um, dedicated, episode 41, to This is Spinal Tap, which I think I understand turns 40 years old next year. And the reason we're doing it now is because uh, we've been talking about doing this for a while. And I happened to be in a video store and I came across like two copies on DVD in the video store for not very much. I thought, okay, God is trying to tell me something. This is a sign. <laughs> So we, we look very forward to that, Gar. You, you have a great rest of your um, day. I will let you get back in the car and get home before it starts pouring down rain. Uh, you have a safe drive, and uh, this will be going on next Saturday. You take care, my friend. Oh, man. I love it, brother. Okay. Take, next, care. take care, buddy. Bye-bye. Chaotic Drifts Magazine.